Thank you very much, Chair Murray and Ranking Member Burr. And I very much appreciate my colleagues' comments and attention to ensuring maximum vaccination in the United States, especially ensuring all American children who are eligible get vaccinated. Uh, because of that line of questioning, I'm able to turn my attention um, uh, in another area that has been uh, talked about a bit today, but I hope we can dig a little deeper. And although the United States is making progress vaccinating people, I'm concerned about the low level of vaccination in low and moderate income countries. For interconnected border states like New Mexico, our physical and economic health depends on international cooperation. Much of the world remains unvaccinated and that puts Americans' health and prosperity at risk. Though 49.6% of the world's population has received at least one dose of COVID vaccine, only 3.7% of people in low-income countries have. And yet in the United States, 15 million vaccines have been thrown away since March 1. Uh, Dr. Fauci, I appreciate your comments to Senator Smith on this topic. And again, I'd like to dig in a little more. Uh, Dr. Fauci, do low vaccination rates concentrated in parts of the world allow COVID to spread unchecked? Yes, Senator, and that's the reason why, as I've stated publicly very often, that a global pandemic requires a global response. Because when you have vaccine dynamics that are rather robust in countries that are under vaccinated, then what could conceivably happen may be likely, certainly there will be mutations, and sometimes mutations uh, aggregate to the point that they lead to a new variant, which would be of concern, particularly if that variant has the potential of evading the vaccines that we already have. And Dr. Fauci, you anticipated both of my follow-up questions, which were asking about the concerns with new variants and evading vaccinations that are currently available. Now, I open this question up to the panel, yes or no, do low vaccination rates in large swaths of the world put the United States health and economic recovery in jeopardy? Uh, Dr. Walensky? We absolutely need a global response. I, I think that the line is no one is safe until everyone is safe. Dr. Fauci? Definitely, yes. Dr. Woodcock? Yes. Ms. O'Connell? Yes. Dr. Woodcock, the more attention that is brought to this area. Um, my, my question is, what more can be done or can we be doing in the United States to ensure countries have the data they need to approve vaccinations in country? Um, during a recent visit with other colleagues, uh, we found out that some countries had not yet approved uh, vaccines that were available across the United States and in many parts of the world. Well, we post as much information as we can. We post our reviews, which have a large amount of information. The uh, material that goes before the advisory committees is all posted. And also, we participate in an international collaboration called ICMRA that um, for Often I'll be on a call, there'll be representatives from 90 to 100 different countries. It's only regulators, and we talk about the challenges and how we can overcome them, and specifically as a vaccine area. So um, the FDA is very happy to collaborate to the extent we can by law with any country to help them uh, with their regulators in getting information that they need. You said something very key there, that the FDA is happy to work with others um, as long as the law allows. And, and one of the areas that I'm very interested in pursuing is what is not allowing the United States to fully work with other countries in this space. The United States is actively engaged in international efforts like COVAX and other regulatory harmonization efforts, but the reality is that low-income countries remain largely unvaccinated. Uh, while the amount of discarded vaccines is a small percent of vaccine doses successfully administered, each wasted dose represents a missed opportunity to protect the health of a person and stop the spread. And so how can we maximize that? And I'm very interested in pursuing what is standing in its way. How can we increase those efforts? What's re uh, required for us to work with countries so that they have a rapid response ready to go? I learned that that exists in Ecuador, even in areas of indigenous communities where they've proven that if they can get the vaccine, they can get into people's arms relatively uh, efficiently. 
Um, and so, Madam Chair, I, I want to be respectful of my other colleagues. I'll submit the remainder of my questions into the record. I want to thank each of uh, the experts that are here today, and I look forward to working with each and every one of you uh, to get more people vaccinated and stop the spread of COVID. Thank you so much. Thank you. Senator Moran. Uh, Chairwoman, thank you, you and Ranking Member and Witnesses.